Hi, I'm Tony Privet. I'm a Slate native, the son of a Santa Fe railroader. I'm Jacob Parker. I work for the BNSF Railway, and I'm a locomotive engineer. I'm C.G. Roy. I was a conductor and brakeman on the railroad for 44 years. My name is Jolene Fondy. My husband and I had a boot and saddle shop here in Slayton for 38 years, right downtown, and most older people know me from that. This is my husband, Ernie Davis, and he's um, And I'm familiar. her biggest supporter. My name is Sue Davis. Um, and I'm here today to talk about something very dear to my heart, the Slayton Harvey House Bed and Breakfast. Fred Harvey uh, started restaurants just like our Harvey House. When he traveled, the food was not good, it was cold and not enough food. So it was his mission to supply good food. And so the people stopped every 100 to 125 miles to eat at Harvey Houses. And that was his dream, to have them all clear across the United States. And that's, that his, his dream came true. Fred Harvey had all the dining service on, on all the passenger trains. Harvey food was exceptionally good, very good. They had these big glass compote containers with a glass top on them. And they'd have apples piled up in there that were so shiny they'd polished them. Or oranges stacked up into a pyramid. Or they'd have bananas. Everything looked so good. And they'd have beautiful cakes and beautiful pies. And oh man, as a little kid, everything looked to me delicious. <laughs> when I was growing up, it was known as the Slate Depot, Railroad Depot. I grew up uh, in the building, going to the building to go with my dad to get on a train or to pick him up when he was getting off a train or sometimes uh, to board the train. So I have uh, great fond memories of the building as a pasture depot. It was just a, a fascinating room inside there because the a uh, telegraph operator was in there. I was fascinated in watching the man operate the telegraph with, the, with his finger and thumb hitting the dots and dashes to communicate with the train that was coming. And I got on the, the train and seeing the, you know, the excitement of waiting for it and then it finally gets there and how massive the engine was and how it made the bricks rumble as it slowly moved through. Dad worked in the reading room at the Harvey House. And then after my dad quit the reading room, he went to work for the railroad. And he was a carman on the railroad. When I was a girl, there were passenger trains that would come through. It's not just, it wasn't just all freight. It was a lot of passenger trains. And uh, I remember during the war, when the soldiers would come through on the trains. And during the Korean War, they shipped soldiers on the train also. And it was, it was really neat because there were troop trains that would come through and we would go down to the depot by the Harvey House and watch the trains go through. But my father, he was a car man, but one morning, before I left the house to go to work for the telephone company, he came in from his job and he asked me, would he like to go to work on the railroad? And I said, well, I don't know. And he said, they're hiring firemen and brakemen if you want it. So I thought about it a while and thought I'd try it. And I did. And 44 years later, I was still working for somebody. I was going to college and uh, got a job on the railroad. It's a promotion, so it made more money. The, the pay is really competitive. The benefits package is excellent. Uh, when you first start out, you really don't count that, you know, until you start a family, like the insurance and stuff. It was a good paying job. I it was a job that you wanted to do. You enjoyed it. It's pretty easy. The hardest part is the schedule. Uh, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So when they call, you got to go. The, 
fellowship between all the men, that's, that's real good. People that you were working with had been working long enough that they were very, very helpful in showing you what your job was and what you needed to do. And they were patient and they would take the time and it wouldn't all for you to catch, catch on to what, what they wanted. I'm a real, it most definitely changes who you are. One train does like what 300 trucks can do. A whole lot more uh, efficient, better for the environment. Not as much diesel. Yeah, it'll always be there. The railroad was as important then as it is today. If it weren't for the railroad, the country would shut down. They moved, they, they moved the freight. I mean, they moved everything that we use. It, it would paralyze the nation if it didn't have the railroad. I don't believe that. The Harvey girls were single women between the age of 18 and 30 that were intelligent, attractive, and easygoing. And they, that was what they had to be to pass to be a Harvey girl. This building's in Sweetwater, but this, that's the uniform that they had to wear. And they couldn't vary from that. It had to be that length. Uh, it had to be just like that. If you got it dirty, you changed because it had to be snow white when you used, when you worked in it. A lot of them married uh, doctors, lawyers, bankers, ranchers. A lot of them married railroaders and they weren't even supposed to date them. But that's what my mother did, so. <laughs> she wasn't supposed to date the cooks either, but she did. So. <laughs> Harvey girls weren't supposed to marry railroaders, but she did. This is her picture. This, she was 19. But this is a picture of my dad. Now, he worked in this Harvey house. I'm assuming in the butcher shop by the, that large knife he's holding. Uh, but he was only 16. So he lived in Lynn County so at one time. and. But then they moved to Slayton so that he immediately tried out for a job here and got one. So. But uh, she worked, she had to sign a contract that she would not marry for the first year. Uh, all the girls had to do that. So, but she didn't marry the first year. She worked for two years before she got married. So. Rose Prashad was one of the last living Harvey girls that had uh, actually worked at the uh, Slayton Harvey house and during our restoration progress she would uh, come down there and tell us stories about the uh, her time working there. It was neat and she would look out the window and she said that she was uh, dating a guy who worked on the railroad and she said she'd, she'd uh, know when he was coming in and she'd stand at the window and watch his train come in. You know those uh, those are really special memories that we've tried to preserve. In 1990, the Harvey House came close to being demolished. A company came to bulldoze the building. They thought, well, before they do that, they might should check and make sure everything was turned off. So they called a local plumber to come in and check and make sure that everything was turned off. Being the smart man he was, he called the mayor, and then the mayor in turn made some calls to the museum in different places, and said, did y'all know they're gonna bulldoze the Harvey House today? They knew that Almarine Childers was very interested in this building. She, she kept trying to get people to join with her and do what has been done, done with the building now, but nobody seemed to be interested, so, Somebody called her and told, told her that they were tearing the building down. So she just lived a few blocks from there. She got in her car, run down there into the parking lot, honked and honked at the guy in the bulldozer. He couldn't hear her. She got out of the car, screaming and hollering, and he couldn't hear her. So she got in front of the bulldozer, between the building and the bulldozer, and did this. 
and he killed the motor. And that's how the Harvey House yeah, was, was saved. The Slayton Railroad Heritage Association was formed. We got a board of directors and we started the renovation. Well, uh, my dad was a retired railroader and uh, he and my mom uh, were a part of the group that first bought the Harvey House and founded the Slayton Railroad Heritage Association. Their involvement, you know, was what got me uh, pulled back into it. The inside, when we started our renovation, we did that. There's a large room when you first go in. Um, and then from there, we went upstairs and built the bedrooms and baths. And by the way, we still had the same original stairs. In 2008, the Harvey House was recorded as a Texas historical landmark. History is such an important part of who we are. So it's not just the building, but you're preserving the stories of the people and you're preserving the history of our region and of our community. That's why it's important. People are still in and out down there, and that's what we want. That's what we saved it for.